purpose for me somehow. Maybe because you came in first. Okay, well, we're recording anyways. <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and get this meeting started here. Um, hopefully, we'll get a couple other folks um, in the meeting as we go. But um, before we get started, actually, so the agenda only really has two topics, and admittedly, we'll see how long each of these um, take us. So I'm not sure if we'll, we'll spend a full hour or not. Um, but the two main topics that I have on here uh, for today, let me share the agenda here with everybody. If you don't have it, here's the agenda in the chat. Um, so the main two topics are to look over our DSpace entities definition and use cases document again. Um, I had asked everybody uh, in the last meeting two weeks ago to kind of add feedback into that um, and help us enhance these use cases. I admit there was not a whole lot of extra comments added into there. So if there's anything you hadn't had a chance to say, we'll have an opportunity to kind of talk through that um, as the first agenda topic. Um, the second topic then is to start to um, delve towards um, looking at the implementation work um, and what we want to do in terms of the next step steps on that so we can kind of get things prepared as soon as possible um, on the entity side and starting to review things and starting to test things and all that sort of stuff. So those are our primary topics for today um, and we should have plenty of extra time near the end or throughout the those two topics uh, to kind of discuss uh, where we're going next um, with entities. Before we get started, though, I did want to note um, this is a little bit around topic number two, and I noted it as, as the top thing there in terms of uh, the timeline for DSpace 7 and what's currently being discussed with the steering group. So I just want to make everybody um, aware of the discussions that are going on. There's, no, there's not been a final decision as of yet, but uh, the steering group has, has recommended that um, we have as a goal to have out an early sort of preview or alpha release of DSpace 7 before the end of this year, uh, which means roughly in the next uh, two months, uh, maybe even a little less than that since we're getting towards the end of October. Um, and we're, the steering group is currently looking at and will be discussing uh, what's going to be included as part of that preview or alpha release. So we're definitely not going to have uh, all features that are part of DSpace 7 in that preview release. It's more of an opportunity to get something in people's hands, let them play around with it, give some early feedback on how DSpace 7 is looking, um, and development will then continue into early 2019 uh, with the goal of still getting the final release out um, in, in early 2019. Uh, but we're just not to a featureful release yet that we can do that um, in 2018. So my assumption right now, though, is uh, we're moving forward with the assumption that entities is going to be a part of that, but that is still a decision that will, or part of that alpha release at, at the end of the year, but that is honestly a decision for the steering group. So I will let you know um, if, if anything changes in that direction, but our goal really is to try and move as quickly as we can uh, with the uh, initial entity prototype and start to review that and get something ready so that people can play around with a very early version of what entities might be uh, before the end of this year. So that's still kind of our, our overarching goal. Um, is there anything else that Mick or, or Levin, did either you wanted to note anything on that higher level topic around what steering is discussing before we move into the actual agenda? Anything I missed? Since you're both on steering, no? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, so that's that's kind of where we're going here. Um, so to kick things off though, uh, let's first talk about uh, the DSpace entities definition and the initial use cases document. And I'm gonna share my screen here just because it might be easier to kind of walk through this together. Let me do that here. Okay, you should be able to see my screen. Let me see if I can bump up the font here just a tad. Okay, um, so essentially, having received no, no extra comments since the last meeting, I wanted to give this opportunity for everybody to kind of add any final feedback into this before we consider this sort of our initial working draft of what we are trying to achieve um, in DSpace 7. 
And I'm calling this sort of a working draft because I think that there are areas here that we'll still have to make uh, decisions on. So uh, some of the use cases we just describe here, it's possible we may need to make some compromises along the way as to what we can actually uh, reasonably achieve in DSpace 7 versus what parts of the use case we may have in a future release. Um, and there may be things that are missing here that we'll start to enhance as we move into uh, more of the development phase um, or better uh, um, describe uh, things in that development phase. But I'm kind of considering this sort of very early documentation of, of things that you can do with entities for DSpace 7. So it's kind of the goal here is just to kind of get us on the same page, make sure we can review this code and test this code uh, with a common understanding of, of what we're working towards and some of the use cases we really want to be able to achieve um, in DSpace 7. Um, so that said, I, there were, uh, anybody have comments there? Levin, were you about to say something or no? Oh, no, no, I'm just okay. not muted and I was just like <clears throat> clearing my throat. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so that said, um, there were some comments here that, uh, uh, that were added prior to last meeting that I've kind of enhanced into this document. Um, so I'll touch on that briefly, but I just want to kind of skim through this. There's also a couple areas that I've asked questions sort of to myself and to the group um, near the top of this uh, that it would be good to kind of talk through very briefly. Uh, today. Uh, we don't necessarily have to make final decisions here on everything, uh, but there are things that I feel are still unclear in my own mind. And so as I try and describe this to other people uh, going forward, whether it's steering or to other developers, I'd like us to get a clearer view of where we sit on some of these. Um, so some of those, just diving in here really quick, uh, these two questions are very much related in, um, in the fact that um, the main question here is really that I think that the term entity and the term item are going to start to get confused more and more um, and what we mean by each uh, and what what things are within DSpace, uh, whether every item is an entity and whether we start to call everything entities or whether everything's really just an item and items now have types and relationships. Uh, I think that's a decision we're gonna have to start to to grapple with as we move forward here, especially in the advertising of DSpace 7 and in this early release um, in, in a couple months here, uh, because I think there's a lot of confusion still in my own mind as to what, ter our, what our terminology is and what our terminology means um, and what is meant when we talk about items versus entities. And the way I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up is because it, it keeps coming up in my own mind that uh, this main statement here that, um, well, these two two things, uh, all items have a single entity type, all items are entities. So if all items are entities and all items have a single entity type and that entity type is stored in a metadata field called relationship type, then, then what is an item anymore? Um, do we just call everything entities or do we call everything items? Uh, because really everything is just an item that happens to have a relationship type. Um, and that relationship type can tell us what, what special type it is. Um, so this is a question that I've been grappling with myself. I don't know if anybody has thoughts on this or, or whether we want to, to move towards a decision here if we just leave this as a known issue moving forward. But I think that in my own mind, I don't know how to describe these two things clearly to users of DSpace um, and whether there really is a difference anymore between what we're calling an item and what we're calling an entity. But that's just a question I wanted to bring up to the group here. I don't know if anybody has immediate thoughts on that or if we want to think on that more and add feedback into the document as we go. Well, I would expect that for some repositories, the entire concept of building relations between two items or entities, whatever you call them, um, is not relevant and for those use cases you don't need to define a type or build any, any, any relations so in, in those cases you can say it's just a normal lease space item nothing changed um, nothing new has come up so you could for instance say an entity is a is an item with a type but keep it as at that because something that is not tight and building relationships with, with it may not be ideal in this case. So we could use a differentiation there, but I don't know whether it's, it's 
really necessary to even differentiate between them. Right, and I think that last point is exactly what I'm getting at, Ben, is that I'm trying to determine whether it's necessary to differentiate why we have two terms for the same thing. And if it all comes down to whether or not it has a metadata field that's relationship.type or not, why does that why does that matter too much? Like, like are these all just items or are all these are all just entities? Like what what is what is the what what should we be calling these? <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. That make well, why don't we just you know, explain you know, what the logic that led to the current situation? You know, we, you know, we're expanding the use of item because it already had some useful behaviors, and people didn't want to have to rebuild that for another object type. Is isn't that what it was? Yes, that's accurate. I guess I'm bringing this up though because it's it's going to get more and more confusing at the user interface level, especially as we're dealing with these sort of objects, like what we're calling things. Like in DSpace user, user interface, we have things that are items, we have things that are collections and communities. Are we now going to have a fourth thing called an entity that we're dealing with? There's everything really just an item um, I, and you I can create say... relationships with items. I don't know. I would be in favor be... of just saying that it's only items. Um, doesn't really matter. I mean, what's in a name? It's in, it doesn't matter what you call it. But given what Ben just said, um, you know, you'll still have use cases where it's just your typical open access repository, and nobody wants to create, and the people don't want to create the the person item. So we just keep it at that, and we keep the terminology as items. Um, but we can talk about it as items are now able to represent specific entities such as a person, something like that. Right. And that's actually, go ahead, more comments, Mark? Entity is an abstraction that you know, most people are not going to need to think about unless they're creating a new type of entity. Uh, you know, yeah, we have this you know, thing that we think of as an entity in the background, but what people are gonna be working with mostly are person, organizational unit, funder, that sort of thing. Right, yeah, and I agree with that completely. I guess I'm, the reason I, part of the reason I'm bringing this up now is because it can also determine how we want to structure things potentially in the code base to some extent. I mean, we could still call things entities down in the lower level and just call them items at the user interface. But I think it's just worth having this discussion early so we get a good sense of where we sit on the terminology here. Because I think that terminology will get confusing to users, to end users, unless we is have a clear all, message. Go is ahead. It at all, is it at all helpful to consider that an item in the traditional DSpace sense is an entity of type null? Um, I don't know that that helps too much because I think that, I think my problem is we have these two words for the same thing. And I'm just starting to wonder once we get to the user interface level and once we're dealing with these objects with actual users, end users, what are we calling them? Um, because I'm worried that if we have two two words that two things that mean the same thing, and the whole control the the only thing that controls whether the thing is an entity or not is a metadata field, the existence of a metadata field, that seems really fragile in terms of having two different words. Like it seems like we should choose one and go with it. And I've actually been thinking in the way that Levin's been talking about that. What if we just start? We can call ourselves the entities working group. We can talk about entities as a conceptual abstract notion. But what if these are all just items? Um, when, we, when we get down to the user interface level, when we start to talk about um, this stuff with end users, uh, we're really just talking about items can now be typed. You can now have, by default, they're generic. But now you can start to type things and, and create specific relationships between items as an optional extra feature in order to create the concept of entities. Um, and whatever entity you want, but they're all just items. Well, they're kind of a, they're a rather weird kind of item. I mean, 
you know, we can't store the National Institutes of Health in a DSpace instance. I'm not sure that I understood um, the point there, Mark. Okay, a, a traditional item is, a, you know, <clears throat> it's a box that holds documents, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, these new kinds of items, they're, they're not like that. They have relationships to things that don't exist in the, you know, in the bit store. But they also could have things in the bit store. They're not unlike that either, because articles could be an entity. So there are plenty of examples of entities that look exactly like regular item, like the item concept that you know of, of D, in DSpace 6. You're correct, though, that there are new types of entities that may not look exactly like a DSpace 6 item in that they may not have files related to them. They're more about metadata and relationships. But, there, but that's, I think that's my point is that I think that there's some things that it's going to be very confusing whether they're an entity or an item unless we start to figure out how we're talking about these, these objects. Like are we really just enhancing the item object model to deal with, uh, to be more configurable? Is it really more like configurable items rather than configurable entities? And it's not something we have to answer today. I'm just trying to to plant this notion in everybody's head everybody's that it's very confusing how it currently is. So I don't know if there's anything else to, to say there, but I, I just wanted to kind of br bring this up as something that we really need to kind of think about because I think it is going to get more and more confusing as we deal with things that, that look like a traditional item but are now an entity um, and just in how we talk about these at the user interface level. Um, beyond, okay, so that's, that was the, my main point up here. Um, I'm going to think more on this as well. I admit I've started to think more on the line of what Leave it and noted that, that maybe we just start to talk about this more as items, even though they, the conceptual model is, is the abstract op object is an entity. They may not necessarily be called entities in the DSpace user interface. Um, the, uh, some other questions that have come up here are from Apollo, who I'm not sure if he's been able to, yeah, Apollo is, is on here now. Um, so I, I, I closed out a lot of issue, uh, questions that were already, that I managed to merge in into this um, document already, but I did want to bring up a couple that Apollo brought up just so that we're keeping them in mind. So a lot of them have been around um, usage of OAI PMH for entities. Um, so there's uh, this question around virtual metadata um, and dealing with uh, virtual metadata um, in solar as well as the OAI interface. And I think Levin answered this pretty clearly with, um, with uh, how the, the prototype code works and that, that it is allowing that sort of capability within the current prototype. Um, but I think it is important for us to just keep that in mind that there are gonna be other areas that we want to be able to enhance the way this, um, this entity level metadata gets um, surfaced at the OAI PMH level and elsewhere. Um, so I don't know if it's worth really talking through this, but just to kind of, I, I was leaving these here just as sort of reminders that, um, that OAI is a, is a need here. Um, and at the use case level, I know there was another question around that that you had right down here as well, Paulo. Uh, again, having to do with, um, with being able, this side, doing an OAI ingest of entities as well, or doing bulk ingests of entities, um, which I think is a use case we're gonna want to support. I was trying to keep the, the user stories relatively simplistic here in that, um, in that there's something we can kind of uh, grasp more initially and in getting entities initially built out at the user interface level. But then after that, we would definitely want to enhance to make sure that you can do all the things you can do with items, that you can do bulk ingests, that you can do um, OEI harvests or imports or things of that nature. Um, so I don't think there's anything else I wanted to note on that other than the existence. I did enhance the user story here because there were feed, there's feedback from Levin and others around trying to 
uh, detail what submitting hierarchical entities needs to look like, uh, some of the features you need to be able to, to do as someone who's submitting entities, um, and what search and browse needs to look like in order to be able to search and browse at different levels of the hierarchy and jump from one level to another, as well as uh, deleting and withdrawing. Um, I called them parent objects because this is sort of a relationship um, where a parent entity, if it's hi a hierarchical entity structure, um, logically a parent entity may have may need to also delete an delete item and or or child entity. Sorry. Uh, so if you were to withdraw an entire volume or an issue of content or delete an entire volume or issue within a journal, uh, what should happen to those articles? Do they still somehow exist and become unrelated or do they actually get withdrawn or deleted alongside uh, their volume or issue? So these are things that I've kind of started to add into here as, as issues we're gonna have to grapple with as we're analyzing the code and as we're starting to test things. Um, I don't know if anybody has any initial comments on this or if there's anything we want to discuss here today. I'm just trying to do a quick scan of this document. So yeah, I, maybe I can just update everyone on, on our progress. Um, so um, we've currently been focusing mostly implementation-wise on what Tim's going to discuss in point two of the agenda so that we have that out as soon as possible and that reviewing um, of what's already in the prototype that's documented in that other Google document um, can start and people can really start working with it. Um, but we also went through this document and already responded to each of the individual use cases and the user stories and everything. Um, we haven't shared that yet because the, currently the, the um, the prototype code is being rebased to work with the latest version of, of master um, um, of DSpace 7, REST, and uh, Angular. Um, that should be ready very soon, but we'll discuss that in agenda point two. But what we've also done for uh, these use cases is list the discussion points, so the points that the current prototype doesn't support yet, so that we can have a discussion here in the group about which of the use cases we would need or want to be supported in DSpace 7 and which ones can be tabled for DSpace 8. So um, ideally, my thoughts were, but of course steering and, and leadership have to decide this, but. Um, I was hoping that the prototype itself would already be included in the first alpha release that supports a lot of use cases, but not all of the use case sub points, but it at least supports both use cases um, to a significant extent. Um, and that we then you know, have a discussion in this working group about, okay, which are the next steps for the DSpace 7 entities and which are next next steps that we'll leave for DSpace 8. Um, yep. So we could go into that discussion now, Tim, if you want, or quickly do agenda point two and then do the discussion and see how far we get. Um, yeah, I think I'd want to get into agenda point two. I think the point of this document, uh, I agree, I, I'm glad that discussion's already happening internally within Atmire. I think the point of this initial document here is to try and detail um, as much as we know about these use cases, things people are going to want to do, but then you're right, the next phase here will be to have to then decide what of what of this can we reasonably do within DSpace Seven? Um, it, are there any of these uh, parts of these use cases or user stories that we're going to have to delay or work around initially? Um, and what would that look like? How would we schedule that out? Um, and all that. So I think that is that's all um, totally on the table with this. I think I'm just trying to get us all on the same page with describing what this might look like as a user story, as a use case, and what things we're probably going to be asked for um, so that we have good responses for what's really reasonable within DSpace 7 to, to make a really flashy, awesome uh, release in DSpace 7 with entities, but, um, but, um, but note which things may not necessarily be included, if any. So that's kind of where I'm going at with this, but I just want to, so I'll, I'll speed this up here. I wanted to note just that I had added some content here around uh, submission search and deletion for that hierarchy use case. Um, on the author profiles use case, um, this, um, oh, there's another note here about OAI PMH from Palo. 
Uh, this one I don't think I enhanced as much. Let me see here. There was the user story. Yeah, actually, I don't think I um, enhanced this one quite as much other than, oh, this was the only enhancement. Um, so I noted that uh, this is, we had discussed this at the last meeting, that the author profile sort of um, use case needs to still involve the organizational uh, entity so that there should be able, you should be allowed to link an author to their organizational entity if you have organizations and how to deal with that. So I tried to enhance that actually at the use case level here um, in terms of trying to, to talk about what that might look like and what people might expect out of that. Um, so that's kind of where I'm going with this document. I still would like people to add comments into this as we go here in terms of things that you see that people are going to be expecting out of these use cases so that we can make um, very useful decisions around what's achievable within DSpace 7 and whether there's anything that needs to wait for a future release um, so that we can kind of respond to that from the get-go with this early release. Uh, but that's all I think I have to say about this particular document. I'm kind of considering it a living document. We'll keep lo looking at it and referring to it as we're reviewing the code itself. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of it for this topic. Uh, were there any other final comments here before we move along to the second second topic of the agenda, which is kind of the next phase? Okay, not hearing anything. So let me pop over here to the agenda. Um, so that'll be our living document. I'll keep that as a resource um, as part of our meetings and we'll keep referring back to that as needed. Uh, definitely feel free to keep adding comments there if your teams locally uh, start to um, discuss these use cases in more detail. Um, so the next stage here, as I noted, uh, we have this preview alpha release we want to start preparing for. So the big gap here for us is we need to start really digging into the entity's implementation, this initial prototype that App Myers developed, and start to um, not only uh, test it and play around with it and give feedback on it, but also do things like give a, excuse me, give a code review uh, of the initial uh, work um, and start to analyze uh, how this will kind of fit within uh, D -Space, the DSpace 7 release. So as Levin noted, uh, this code is not in the main code base yet, but we do have branches available here that where the code will sit. So the Angular UI portion of the entity's work is going to go in our Angular UI development area under a configurable entities branch. Whoops, I didn't need to click on that. Um, it'll go under a configurable entities branch and the REST API backend work will go under a separate configurable entities branch on that end. Um, and so the goal here is to start developing and working on these collaboratively once the initial pull requests get created by Atmire and get merged into these branches uh, so that we can start to work on this collaboratively and start to provide collaborative feedback and development and have other people actually work on the code and actually enhance it um, in ways that we can uh, do so within the coming couple months here before this alpha release. Um, so I don't know, Levin, is there anything else you wanted to say about that and about the status? I know you noted that, that there's work going on to get these initial pull requests ready. Yep, so we're preparing the pull requests for both REST API and the UI. The REST API actually was finished two hours ago, but Ben's going to do a review of that tomorrow, um, and then we can fire that pull request. That's going to be definitely tomorrow or at absolute latest Thursday. Um, and the UI should also be there, uh, the Angular site, by the end of the week. There we have a little bit more work to do on writing some documentation. Um, but it will have unit tests, it will have integration tests. It, it's a pull request as complete as any other DSpace 7 pull request, basically. Oh, excellent. So will it also have things like Java docs and stuff already? Yeah. Or is that, oh, all, awesome. Yeah, That's yeah great. everything. That's great. That should hopefully make it easier to kind of do some initial reviews. Um, yeah, so so go we ahead. were hoping that anyone that has already done some reviewing, some work on um, DSpace 7, like Mark, for example, or Terry Brady, who's not in this meeting, could just pick this up and start looking into it. So. Yep, that makes sense. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. 
So, um, so I'm going to admit here. So we we talked about this a little bit last week, or not last week, last meeting. <laughs> um, and I know Mark, you 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 volunteered um, to kind of help out with this. Uh, Paul, I have Paulo's name and um, Alexander as well to start to try and help out uh, with reviews here, with playing around with the code, with giving some early feedback um, on the work that's going on here, um, and even providing bug fixes or patches if you have time for that sort of stuff. Um, and I'm going to admit. Um, I am really going to need some help with this. This is the thing that's going to uh, to take us uh, a good amount of effort to make sure that this code is looking good and working right and and ready for um, for uh, more public eyes um, in that sort of preview or alpha release. Um, and this is an area that, while I'm going to try and chip in as best I can, I'm really going to need others to step up here and help uh, simply because. Uh, there's so much other work that's trying to get into this preview and alpha release that I, I expect that the vast majority of my time is going to be in trying to make sure everything's moving, <laughs> making sure everything's going as quickly as we can get it there, and also starting to get some early documentation and things like that around that preview release so that once we're ready to, to cut that and put it out there for folks, that there's a useful way for them to, do, to start to play with it and start to understand what is in. That, that initial release. So I am very much looking for, for you all to take a lead on this. Uh, I would like some feedback though on, on uh, how, how you'd like to best organize this. Is there anything I can do to help, to help um, those of you who've already volunteered, anybody else who's willing to kind of chip in here, is there anything I can do to help give this structure? Uh, do we need to have a sub team here? Do we need to have wiki spaces that we can work on here or or wiki pages underneath our current entities working group area I mean, I mean is there any suggestions that you would have and how you'd like to move this effort forward and this could come from anybody not just the three folks listed here so no suggestions Everybody's clear, crystal clear on what you're going to do to try and help move this forward in terms of, of reviewing code, testing code, uh, providing feedback uh, within GitHub or within um, uh, issue tickets or anything like that? Well, that sounds like a, a good question. Now, how are we going to communicate about this? Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's an excellent point. Um, I think I, I'd like to hear from you all as to what would be the most useful, but the ways I can see doing this is um, we could, uh, there's a couple ways it could go. Uh, we could uh, do some initial reviewing in the initial pull requests themselves. I'm not sure how large these pull requests are going to be, but you could start by adding comments under there, adding inline code comments. That's one way to just kind of kick things off. We could leave those open for a little period of time to allow um, anybody who wants to to sort of add inline code comments and initial feedback. Um, we could create a wiki space to start to discuss some of this, uh, or not a wiki space, a wiki sort of structure to discuss uh, the pull requests, any questions, just a place to log things, uh, log questions, log concerns, um, things of that nature. Or we could move some of those to Jira or things of that nature, or, or tickets. But, but I'm kind of, I'm not sure if the tickets is the right direction yet since some of this code is gonna be so new. But I guess I'd like to hear feedback as to what you think would work best for your work style. Well, after the initial pull request is merged, seems like you know, the, our usual methods would be a reasonable way to do it. Uh, you know, if there's a, a problem or an opportunity, capture it in Jira. Uh, when, you know, when you've got code, put it in GitHub. Um, so I, I was actually hoping to uh, split this, the, the review work up in a little bit more like bite-sized pieces. Okay. Um, so that that um, the, the first review would be just making sure that you know everything compiles, all the tests um, are successful, integration tests work, code style is okay, um, because the rest is often 
topic for broader discussion since this is like a very new concept it's not so clear cut what is a bug um you know what is something that's missing is it really missing or is it something that we just want to add at a later time mm -hmm. so it would be good so if, if people could first pitch in to just go through the code um and just try to see if it's written properly if it's understandable if you know everything compiles everything works um, and you can use the document that i just pasted in the chat um, that actually explains um, the implementation um, that has some detail and links to implementation and what it does so you can get uh, a, a quicker overview and if certain people would be able to volunteer for, let's say, the REST API part, the Angular part, or the configuration and the database part. Um, that would be great. And then we could move this along quickly and then go back into discussing, like, OK, what do we really define as being in scope um, for, for DSpace Sound? So it sounds like, from, from that, it sounds like to me that uh, the initial pull request, the goal that you're proposing is that the initial pull request just get a relatively quick review to make sure it looks good enough to at least get them into these branches, into the configurable entities branches, um, and then kind of merge those quickly. The goal would be to merge those quickly and then have additional uh, discussion and feedback on, um, on the direction and on what features may be in and out, um, presumably either in a, Maybe it's in the Google Doc that I've created around the use cases, or maybe it's in a wiki page. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of where that where that discussion happens because I think that discussion is going to have to kick off, uh, ideally before our next meeting, and it has to kick off kind of between meetings. There has to be a good amount of it between meetings. Otherwise, I worry we're going to we're going to really rapidly lose time. So my suggestion would be in the documents and that in the, the Google Doc and that we then supplement that um, with discussions in the meetings. So um, let me just give a very quick example of, of uh, one of these things. Like, for example, name variance is something that's included in one of the use cases. We have uh, written down what we would um, see as an addition to the current implementation in order to support um, name variants, but we've made some choices in that proposal. Um, so, and then what we need to do is first of all decide is name variants something that we absolutely need to be supported in the DSpace 7 implementation? Um, and yes or no, uh, how would we approach it? And both of those are related to each other. If, if we say no, the support really needs to be implemented in a very you know, fundamental way that's a lot of work, then we might want to table it for DSpace 8. If we say, I know, okay, this is a, something that can be done quickly and cleanly, then we can include it in DSpace 7. Um, so um, what we were thinking about is, is to, to uh, use the use case document and have uh, highlight these discussion points there um, so people can read up on it before the next meeting and, and give their, their input. Yeah, that that seems reasonable to me. We can add um, we can add comments into that use case document on specific use cases and note that uh, this use case is not currently implemented in the prototype. And those those comments can either come from Atmire or come from testers. They can they can add their 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 notes into the use cases document. And say this does not seem to be implemented, um, or or things of that nature, so that we can then touch on those into in each of these meetings we can go through the ones that have not been implemented or where there's major questions about how they've been implemented uh, from a reviewer uh, so that we can kind of get a better sense of of what the discussion needs to be in these meetings and where our time is best spent in these sort of face-to-face -face meetings yeah, and then we, we can totally prepare that um, before the next meeting that shouldn't i mean should be also doable by the end of the week um, but we were hoping that people would be volunteering to at least to review the code um, in terms of, you know, does it work? You know, do the tests work? Is the test coverage complete? Um, and, and is the code style okay so that at least we can 
you know, have that part of the prototype code that we worked hard on um, already in the next stage and then focus our discussions on, on these open tokens. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think some of those things you mentioned are going to get checked automatically as soon as you create a pull request, like code style, uh, code coverage. Those things are automated, oh, automated now. Um, so we'll, we'll get that feedback from GitHub as soon as the pull request is created. Um, but yes, I agree. I think that we need to, um, I'm assuming, my assumption, I should correct this assumption, is that Mark, Paulo, and Alexander, as soon as these pull requests are created, um, I can point the three of you at them to start to do uh, some very quick initial code review just to kind of make sure the code uh, looks reasonable enough to merge into this branch and, and keep in mind that this is not the main primary master branch. It's more just a, a work in progress branch. So the code can still be a little bit work in progress, but we want to at least have it up to the standards for Java code and also sort of the Angular uh, interface code. Um, is that accurate? That yes, you three can sure. work on that? Yeah. That sounds good to me. Okay. Um, and I, and I, I, go ahead. Uh, that does bring up another issue though. How are we going to keep this branch in sync with the, you know, master? Uh, I think like with anything, we're going to have to do a regular sort of pull request to, to sort of merge it together. So we'll occasionally have to have someone, whether it's at Meyer or one of you three um, or someone else who wants to pop in and chip in, uh, do a quick sort of pull request just to sync it up with master. Um, and those can be ones that we just review really quickly and, and get merged as soon as as soon as possible. We don't have to do a whole lot of, of checks on those sort of updating to master, but we will need to do that on a regular basis. Um, and I can notify folks when major things have gone into master where we'd want to resync, uh, but, but, um, but yeah, that's just something we're going to have to, to deal with, I think. I, don't, I can't think of a better way to do it. Okay, so it'll be just, it'll be done on a call for a volunteer basis. Uh, yeah, I can call for a volunteer if you notice something uh, is is vastly out with master or you just have extra time at the end of a Friday, Mike, or something, you're more than welcome to create a pull request just to sync it back up to master. Um, and I will just, I, I can do a quick thumbs up on it and help get it merged right away. Um, but uh, but yeah, otherwise I will keep an eye on things and, and let you know as soon as we need to definitely uh, resync and call for volunteers for that. Okay. Yeah. My, my concern here is that I, I want to make sure it happens often enough that we don't get into a big mess, but that usually means that somebody is designated as being responsible. For the, for the resync, you mean? Yes. Just to, to, to make sure it is happening at reasonable intervals. Okay. How about this? How about I can be in charge for resyncing this um, uh, at regular intervals uh, and you three concentrate on code reviews and getting the code reviewed and tested. Um, I'll, I'll do the resync myself. If for some reason I can't do it one week, I'll ask one of you to do it for me. But it'll probably be on a relative, about a weekly basis. Okay, I, I don't mean to put this, you know, to put the, the work of the resync on any particular person. Uh, making sure it happens is not the same thing as making it happen. Understood. I, I'm just noting that. I mean, I, I want your effort more on the review process than on um, anything else. Like I, I need more folks to contribute on code reviews, frankly. Um, and so I'd, I'd really appreciate concentrating efforts on code reviews, making sure things are, are working well, uh, doing testing, because um, I think that would get, it would help also DSpace 7 to get the three of you more involved in, in doing that for DSpace 7 in general. So, when so it, yeah, go ahead, Mark. Got it. Yeah, and so when it comes to actually resyncing things, I actually don't think this is going to be, I mean, there are things coming to, to the DSpace 7 code base on a regular basis, but I don't think this is gonna be such a massive effort that things coming in are gonna, like the, it's gonna be about a weekly effort, uh, maybe once a week for about an hour, 
uh, resync everything real quick. I don't see it happening much more frequently than that, just based on the current uh, pace of development. If it kicks off and goes faster, then I will definitely start asking for help. So, but I, I can be in charge of this. Yeah, sounds good to me. And also, you know, the more focus is on the review, the quicker it can actually be merged into the master branch and all that work of sync, keeping it in sync can be avoided. So. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so so we have a direction here for the the pull requests will be coming. Um, you three will be in charge of doing some code reviews there. Um, I'll keep an eye on the the syncing with master. Uh, we will add um, feedback and questions into the use cases document as comments. Um, if there's things that don't seem to be uh, implemented yet or if there's areas of question or confusion with the code versus the use cases those go in the use cases document um, trying to think if there's anything else we want to touch on in this topic anyone have any any outstanding questions or comments on this Okay. No, we're dying to go into the discussion of all the next steps because there is still quite a bit to do. Yes. Um, so we can uh, go into that discussion. We have only have about 10 minutes left here. Um, before we dive into that discussion, I just, uh, we already have our next meeting scheduled. The one thing I just want to add really quick, though, is that I noticed that we are starting to get to the time of year where daylight savings ends at different times in different countries. Uh, so the upcoming meeting schedule is going to be, you're going to have to pay close attention to what 15 UTC means in your country. Uh, so for example, on November 6th, when our next meeting is, uh, at that point in time, USA, I know, will be done with daylight savings. So that's going to mean that this meeting now is an hour earlier uh, than it is today. Uh, and I don't know when that daylight savings ends in, other, in Europe or in other countries in Europe. Uh, but I just wanted to make that well known so that folks don't get confused about what time this meeting is. And I wanted to verify that uh, when this meeting moves to an hour earlier, which it's going to start doing for everybody, uh, that that's gonna work for everyone. Are there any objections to just letting this sit at 15 UTC? There may be times when I would have to come in late because I've got a a, you know, a weekly sprint planning meeting that may overlap. Okay. Noted. For us, it can move to an hour later. And I assume that 15 UTC next week is going to be an hour earlier than it is today, if I'm not mistaken. It um, starts as of early November. So, I mean, if we wanted to move it, we could move it to 16 UTC as of November 4th. Uh, or as of November 6th, sorry, 16 UTC, which would keep it, for me, us in the States, we keep it the exact same time. I don't know if it would move to an hour later for you all in Europe briefly and then move back. <laughs> no, we uh, switched this weekend in Europe, so, oh, okay. you know, and the next meeting is only in two weeks, so it makes no difference. So I would oh. say let's keep this time. Okay, uh, so then I will change the next meeting to 16 UTC, which would keep it at this exact same time for everybody as of next meeting. Yeah. Then that's that's what we'll do. It'll be a 16 UTC meeting. Sounds so good. To okay, that's all I wanted to touch on on that. So now we have eight minutes for discussion, really quick. Um, so go ahead and kick us off, Levin. Yeah, just gonna go over the points that need to discussion. I won't go into any detail. So the things that are not supported in the current prototype are one name variance. To, um, which is touched upon a little bit in the use cases, but I think it's definitely worth the discussion is permissions on relations. Um, three is how displays should, uh, how relations, excuse me, should be displayed. Um, so in your use case, uh, I forgot what the example is exactly, but you said a pageable sortable list with the search box um, and so we've been thinking about this and we actually have a proposal of doing this more based on the amount of relationships there are between an entity and other entities. 
Um, so let's say, for example, you're on author profile page and there are only five articles. It doesn't make sense to have a pageable browsable list to be shown with the search box. And that we just have a simpler display. Right. So we have this proposal um, that works a little bit like, um, you know, you have to, if you know XML UI, like item summary view, um, uh, list view, things like that, then you have different templates that are used in different situations, depending on how you configure it. Mm -hmm. um, that would require a day or three to five of development, um, depending on how far we want to go. But that's something we definitely are planning on doing. Um, deleting and withdrawing. I think we just need to decide what we want to do um, with that in DSpace 7. Um, currently, our reasoning is that at least anything that is virtual metadata should be copied over. So let's say you have an, an, an author profile and an article, and for some reason uh, you want to delete the author profile, and uh, in the article item, the author's name is added in as virtual metadata through that relation, that at least that value gets copied in as regular metadata in the, the article. Um, there are cases, especially with hierarchical data models, where you might want to delete um, connected entities. Um, like if you want to delete the journal, that you have yeah. the option to delete all the underlying volumes, issues, and articles related to that journal. <clears throat> but we currently think that that's not necessary for DSpace 7. Um, that's not a huge deal if that's not in there. Um, the selected or highlighted works listing use case, um, that can be done in several ways, but we would say, I mean, it is possible in, in, in um, having a separate list of highlighted works uh, or even in having them on top of the, the uh, for example, the, the search view. If you have 100 articles, you want to put like five on top. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of, of how you're sorting or searching or whatever. Um, so we think that that's not such a hugely important use case. Um, it can be done through some simple customization or by just making the relation is highlighted work and just having a, a, a double relation between author and an article. So I think that's not an essential use case. Um, and then the biggest next step discussion is of course the submission because uh, you know when we started working on the prototype there was nothing uh, of the submission in the master branch yet uh, it's now slowly but steadily coming into the master branch and there are some questions about how to intermix different um, values so if you have for example for an author you can have plain text values. So let's say Tim, you, I, and Michele are author of an article. Um, you know, I might be represented as an, an author item. I'm not gonna use the word entity, but author item in the repository. So that's represented as a relationship. Tim, you might be part of the institution that runs the institutional repository and you're in the authority control with your internal staff ID. And Michele, you're external and um, you're just there as a plain text value. How do we mix all of these three in? And how, from a user perspective, do you want to provide input of that metadata? Um, how do we do that? Um, and how do you make it as usable as possible for people who are not necessarily aware of the fact that there might be an entity for my name, uh, an authority control entry for Tim's name? for example. So I think the submission, like the, the, the previous topics that I touched on, we have a, a proposal written down here, drafted that I can share uh, later this week that I think can be discussed quickly and a quick decision. Submission is a bigger um, thing where we have to decide on you know, some additions to how things are stored as well as how they are retrieved as how they're put into the system. And then permissions is also a very open topic, I think. Um, I don't want to go over time, so two minutes. Um, permissions is a very open topic uh, where we could go through that very quickly and say, look, you know, right now 
in DSpace 7 if you have permissions, added permissions on an I or on one of the two items that you're going to relate to each other, you can make the relation, period. Mm -hmm. Um, but in the future, we might want to go more granular and that would need some re-implementation. We have an idea of how we would do that. Um, if we find use cases where it's very important that there are permissions on creating those relations today, um, then we can discuss that as well. So those are, that's the more open topic. So I think those are the most important ones um, that require some discussion from the group. Okay. Yeah, I would. I would like to definitely see the document you've written up. Um, I, based on the number of things you brought up there, I think we'll probably need to prioritize which ones we see as higher priority for, like DSpace Seven, and which ones could wait till later. So if there's features that that are not implemented that we think are are really kind of almost um, required or whatever you want to higher priority, we should concentrate on those discussions first and potentially table others if we think that it's not as high a priority. And then there was one other thing, like what do we do with kind of showcase implementation? Because currently the prototype includes both those data models. So you could like run a script and have either of those two data models of those two use cases um, be built. Do we want to add something like that in the alpha and which of the use cases are we going to um, um, you know, work out in detail and include it as kind of the showcase of what you can do with the typed items, not just the entities. Um, so you, by that you mean which ones are we going to ship like with the alpha? Is that what you mean? Like a sample yeah. use cases? Yeah, I would anticipate it's the two we have in our use cases document. So I'm both. Author profile. Yeah. yeah, ideally both if we can, just to show two different ways of dealing with content. If for some reason we feel one is not going to be ready um, in time for the alpha, we could ship with one. I think that would be a decision up to us um, in terms of how many we want to support in that alpha. But I think that decision probably needs to be based on the document you keep referring to, like what, how fully featured are each of these use cases? Is one much, much easier to achieve in time for the alpha versus the other? Um, what's higher priority, things of that nature which we can discuss in the next meeting in a lot more detail. Um, once we've had a chance to look at that document, we can set aside a good amount of that meeting uh, to talk towards that. Yeah, it's basically a copy paste of your document and then you know links added to the things that are already implemented and supported in the current code. Um, and then um, some you know, details about things that are not supported, um, so. That should be not too difficult to share, but I'm hoping to have the focus be on review first. So when would you like to have the opportunity to look into this document? Uh, the the document you're talking about for the use case questions? Yeah. Um, I think it would be good to actually get that out as soon as you can. Honest, the review, I agree, is is higher importance, but I think it's important to get this document in front of everybody as well. So I think if they came out at the same time this week, that would be ideal. Um, okay. Waiting until next week, um, it would be better to get it out as soon as possible just because um, we don't want to be waiting until the last minute so people don't have a chance to look at it for the next meeting. So okay. the sooner yeah. the better, essentially. Sure. Okay, and we're a couple minutes over time here. Um, so I don't think there's any other notes to bring up here. And it sounds like our next meeting will be touching on um, how the implementation's going in terms of the review process. And any questions that come out of that, as well as the document Levin just referred to in terms of uh, analyzing what's currently in the prototype um, and what features or use cases we want to prioritize getting completed in times for D, in time for DSpace 7 versus others we feel may be lower priority. So that'll be the goals for next meeting. Um, any last thoughts before we close up? Okay, not hearing any. Thank you all for your time. Um, and we will talk more on Slack and uh, see you in uh, two weeks at 16 UTC. So the same time. Thanks all. Thank you, Tim. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.